How was Good your morning. Good morning. And uh, welcome to our second session. <laughs> yeah. And we're looking forward to hearing from you on your painting and how you began painting. Actually, I didn't begin painting for the sake of painting. I was a little girl and I used to love to draw. And um, I was hardly, I think I was only seven years old when uh, in Calcutta we went back from here and I, I was very interested in the hut that we saw on the way when we came by train. And uh, when I went back to Calcutta, I'd never seen huts in my life. So I did some huts and uh, coconut palm. And I used to ask how, how is it all the hut had some creeper on? And then my parents explained that it was usually pumpkin creeper so one could also eat not only the pumpkin. In Bengal, we also uh, have a fried uh, thing of the flour. And um, so most of these huts in around Pondicherry, which was a very small town at that time, were huts. And another thing that interested me, I should have kept, I had kept a photograph of it was the way they pulled the water out of the wells because there was no gender water system. So they used to pull the water out of the wells in the fields. That also you could see on the way to Pondicherry station. And um, there was a whole big scaffolding like that of bamboos. And uh, the fellow would step onto a, a curved sort of wood and that would bring the uh, bucket down into the uh, into the well and then he would walk up on that side and it would come up like a seesaw like a seesaw and uh, someone would be there to pour that water out into the channel dug out for the field and again they would do the same so i was very interested in that and, but my first drawings were of uh, whatever they gave in the classroom elsewhere. Here, in 1942, we were here in this house from uh, February to December, the whole year. At that time, mother had arranged for us to have different classes. We used to also work in a department. I was only uh, 42, nine year old, and uh, we had classes of English, and we had classes of uh, drawing classes with you know Sanji Bonda. Sanji Bond was one of the artists who um, was trained by the mother, um, and um, we used to go to him after having our midday meal, so between 12 and 1, because after 1 he had his own work. He used to, he de designed the Golconde top chimneys or something like that. He had a very sure hand, a true artist, and um, we used to go to him. And as it was between uh, midday 12 and 1, I used to feel very sleepy. Um, I was, uh, I used to doze off sometimes, and then he said, you are feeling sleepy? Oh, wait a bit. I've got a banana, and he knew I was very fond of green bananas. So he peeled that banana off. He said, I'm holding in my hand. You draw it, and then I'll give it to you. Oh. <laughs> The, he held for some time, then he said, how long will you take my hand? My arm is aching. <laughs> so uh, then I, I, I finished it and then I had the banana. So it was good. Do you have uh, those drawings? I had. I don't think I have kept it now anymore. 
So you finished the drawing of the banana. Banana. And at that time we used to do, uh, we used to have an hour of English uh, with one, uh, one of the sadhaks. And this is the book we used to do, and uh, High Rooms of Literature. Here, it was, it was full of stories, and there was this story of one young boy, Antonio, who was a kitchen boy, and his Italian master, I forget his, uh, his name, mm, uh, the cook asked uh, him to do, he said, so he did a lion in butter, and that was kept on the dining table. And the person in, uh, uh, the gentleman said, who has done this? And they said, uh, it is this child, Antonio. Then uh, he sent Antonio to the school. Hmm. And in our class, actually in the book itself, they asked us to draw that lion. Hmm. And what I did is this. I cut the original, I had to color around to make it uh, I uh, know it's a Xerox copy of the original. I did it and took it to Shandibonda. And you were this And is I said How old were you? I, I was nine. You were nine. Mm. And he he was very surprised that I had enlarged it on my own. And I said I can't do the eye. So he did the eye for me. Huh. He did the eye of for yes. me. And uh, I have kept uh, this Xerox copy of a drawing I had done at age nine. So that is how uh, they found that I was not only interested, I was quite good in drawing. And I started drawing and um, we very soon, I, after the ashram press started, I had the idea of giving a few cards to the mother. Uh, in pencil drawing. So I drew in pencil a few flowers and uh, mother asked me if it was uh, if it was watercolor. I said no it is pencil. So she said oh it's not so easy to deceive my eyes. <laughs> she, she being an artist. So she took the card nearer the open doorway and she said, yes, it is true. You have done very well. Tu feras du pastel merveilleux. You will do a very, very good pastel. I was so, uh, uh, so, uh, how should I say, a little shy and a little, you know, in on. I, I never asked her. I didn't understand what was pastel. So I came back to the house. Uh, I came back home. We had our dining table downstairs. It was breakfast time, and I said, Mother said like this, what is pastel? So <laughs> my, my brother, the doctor, Dr. Shotobrotho, he said, uh, aha, uh, she said that he was working in Madras at that time, now Chennai. And so the next time he came back from there, he brought real pastel papers for me, a full roll of them. He said I couldn't get the best quality. And my mother got a, a, this oil, oil, oil chalk, oil this thing for me. And my uncle, who is an artist, sent from Calcutta real oil pastels. And um, with I think 24 colors, 24. So I started, and then um, Gentilal, you know, my mother said I have made an appointment with Gentilal. You go at this time, he will show you. So how to how to do a pastel? I had kept his sample for quite some time. I don't have it now. He, he said she, he took a brass pot and he told me in pastel 
you always uh, give the highlight first. You keep the highlight correct. It was almost white and you shade it off. Then you start the shading after drawing the main, main brass pot. So that was my first lesson. And uh, he showed me how pastel uh, is usually done in strokes, not like pencil, this thing. But I combined the two. And um, I offered to the mother uh, a few of my paintings. And uh, the ones I remember, I, I shall see my my album, otherwise I will forget. This is the type I did with pencil, color pencil. Uh, I'm looking for the one. <laughs> I've cluttered it up with everything that I had in hand. Yes. I'd shown um, one to the mother. This was a vision I had when the mother was concentrating above, above her head. And mother liked it very much. Then um, I had a dream. This one. This one. Morning glory. The Morning glory. Aesthetic taste. So. You had a dream. I had a dream where I saw it in different in a center of the consciousness, as if it was part of my self, my consciousness. And mother had liked it also, and I kept it. And once, when I was um, getting it ready for this album, I wanted to um, touch up the shading beside. So mother said, no, keep it as it is. You saw it like that, <laughs> you know, with the cracks around. Oh, yes, I see. Hmm. So, did you continue the cards with mother? I continued the cards with the mother, and mother told me, uh, if you want me to write on that card, you must keep a little page for me. And she showed me one uh, card done by Bibhadi of, I think, Tender Love Roses. And it was a very beautiful artist, they are all artists, done so well, with space for mother to write a few lines. So she said, if you want me to write, you have to leave a few lines, a little space for me. But um, those cards were given after 1952. But before 1950, when I was still about uh, just 12 years old, or 13 maybe. Um, the school had been opened when I was 10 years old. So mother suddenly asked me one day to take up, a dra take up drawing classes. Mm. And drawing classes with little children, about nine year, nine year, 10 year old. And I was 12 years old. So I went <laughs> to the classroom there were about uh, 12, 10 to 16 of them. And the first benches were really naughty. And so I went back. <laughs> I went back and told mother, mother, I can't control this class. So mother said, you see, children learn with their body. So you will do like this. Put a point on one, po on one place on the floor and another point on another place. Ask them to walk. 
and then ask them to go reach the point around your table. So they'll have to draw a straight line and a curved line. So that's how you began. Then one fellow who was very naughty, he said, I know another way of reaching that point. I said, well, show me. So he started at this point, and he jumped onto the platform of the teacher, jumped down and up, up. <laughs> and down and reached the point. I said, all right, draw it. So everyone drew a set of lines like that. That's how I had started, and um, uh, much later I went into drawing quite seriously. Whenever I had time, especially on my on the holidays, I used to paint a picture, emphasize. But the children, what kind of things you gave them to paint? And that um, it was uh, sometimes a leaf, separate leaf, sometimes only, um, actually that class I can't remember very well, but um, we, ha we had prepared uh, sets on which we had learned when we were young, shading, like a cube in white. Uh, uh, cylinder in white and sphere in white. So we had to draw it and shade it when we were young. So to these children, I think I gave one or two s such things. And uh, then we uh, tried some leaves, I think, if I can remember. I don't remember very well what exactly I did. Was it only pencil sketches or coloring also they did? Uh, first it was only drawing. Afterwards, um, to these children, I think we tried a little shading because we didn't have so much, so many colors and all. Much later, when I took the primary section in 1972, 75, 76, like mm. that, at that time we did uh, drawing in collaboration with um, Mahesh Podar and uh, these people. So at that time they used to um, do uh, two things because at this level, uh, Sri has told us that science has to be done by observation. And uh, if you have made the child observe a flower, next uh, lesson, take a flower of a similar type. So automatically the child will remember the previous one that he has seen. No need to learn by heart things. And uh, so I had tried that with this progress flower, periwinkle of Madagascar, mm -hmm. it is called. So their class was called progre. So I said, um, do you know the flower which is called progre? progress? So yeah, some knew, some didn't know. So the next lesson I took a progress flower, the mauve one. And uh, the leaves they observed, very, very uh, symmetrical and uh, the vein, veins are very clear and always as if the same pattern. So uh, the next day I took a white one with the stem. So they said it is the same flower, and um, then one of them said, no, this stem of this one is more green, and this one has a mauve. And that was the first time I noticed that the color of the flower for this herbaceous plant uh, was also there in the stem. 
and the white progress was pure green stem and otherwise everything was the same. They were very intrigued by the fruit of the progress, always in two bits like that. And um, that is how through comparison we did the progress flower. Did you show up Sweden's works to the mother? Huh? Sweden's works. Did you show them to, to the uh, Earlier, these were after 73. These ah, were yes. after 1975, 76. Mm, but mother had sent me to take up the primary classes. In the 1972-73 session, our school begins in December. So in 1972-73 session, she asked me to start the primary classes because I told her uh, that the more I was reading her uh, ideas on education and Sri Rupindo's, of course, which he had written in System of National Education, and um, I feel I've got many ideas are coming to me, but all are meant for children. Mm -hmm. So mother told, uh, I think she told Poorna, a lot of folk and fassa. Then she will have to do this. So I switched over from the high secondary classes to the primary classes. Mm -hmm. And um, um, but uh, some of the Harcourt students wanted to continue French with me, so they used to come to the school. I didn't go to the Harcourt. So you took English class also, French and English both? French and English both I used to take up. And drawing because mother asked me to take up. And afterward, I introduced, I found that uh, children's class teachers gave them some drawing, made them do some drawing, but the older students didn't do. And Sri has said in his system of national education that drawing should be included in the syllabus, not to make of the children artists or painters, but simply to increase their power of observation and bringing a eye to hand coordination. Mm. You see? So I said we must introduce painting and several of our teachers were very willing. So we started what we call call even now the art room, mm. which my sport art is in charge of now. We started it in nineteen seventy one so that older students, when they were free of older that is of higher secondary classes, they had no regular drawing class. They had classes for fabric painting, those who wanted to do fabric painting, they did it with a few teachers. And in the same way, those who wanted to draw, do drawing or painting would come to the art room for doing. The interesting thing about the art room is that I sent, um, I chose a photograph of the mothers from Pranubda's collection, and I gave it to Pranubda, saying that, uh, please ask mother to sign it, this is for the new room. And mother signed it, and when her portrait was put in the classroom, uh, she came directly from her room mm. to commission it, sort of, to look at the classroom, one night, one evening, one night. and. Um, in collaboration... That was which year? Huh? Which year she came? 1971 we started. Yes, 1971. Uh, she left about in 1973. Mm -hmm. In 1971 we... I, I sent the picture. We started the art room in 1971. And... Uh, Usha Raujipai, who was a painter, mm -hmm. and uh, Shanji Banda, and... Uh, what about Preeti and Dhanavanti? Dhanavanti. Preeti was still a little too young, ah. uh, becoming 
on the way of becoming an artist, not yet mm -hmm. ready for teaching. But Dhanuanti, Shadi Banda, uh, and Usha Rajibai, these three people came uh, regularly, thrice a week or twice a week, according to their timings, and took up I was just one of Usaban student. You were one of them? Usaban student, later on Dhanuanti Ben. Dhanuanti Ben. Yeah. Oh, you were with Usha, Usha Ben? You were a little boy at that time? Yeah, I was there and uh, Usha Ben liked my paintings, so she took me to Sanjeev Banda. Acha. 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 What were some of the ideas that, uh, that you had for the younger children in art? Your mother said to, you should take that up. Uh, for the earlier children's class, I told you what mm -hmm. happened, but the later children's class, I tried to combine music and art. And every week, they used to have, I used to have a short recording of a, a very short piece, about one minute or two minutes, maximum three minutes piece, which they would listen to twice or thrice. So I had told them, we used to keep um, glasses or jars with uh, oil pastel. Many of them used to break, so we used to keep in bowls. Um, I used to say that when you listen to the music, some color can occur to you. So it seems, and you will pick up the color and keep it ready. Um, after the music, you draw something, whatever you like. So they did some wonderful work. Mm -hmm. And uh, then after that, I taught them how to listen to music and um, how to take the phrases. This we had learned with the dancer, Rolf Golovsky, you know. Oh. Uh, that is, uh, they recognized that there were phrases but uh, they had to start the movement of the arm from one side of their desk and finish it exactly at the end of the phrase. So they would know how many phrases there, there were in the piece that I had chosen. So for each phrase, they would choose a design that would suit. Some of them, they were mostly abstract paintings that they produced and they were very good. One of the funniest ones was uh, one day I said, uh, they had singing classes also, but in the classroom I said, you have done with all the um, do re mi fa. So how would you like to present the gamut? And uh, we chanted something, I don't remember the details. Mm. When one girl did something wonderful, a little like a, a, like a shell, you know, which had different colors. But one boy who was really technically minded did seven steps like that. And over that, a matchstick drawing of a fellow who was climbing the stairs. <laughs> And everybody had such a good laugh that um, so uh, the gamut became seven steps, mm -hmm. and one fellow was climbing the steps. So like that, we had different uh, experiences with the children. Some of them got interested in painting and art. What I did was to simply show them a picture. See, I, I opened Robinson Crusoe here. Yeah. Show them a picture. What is the main theme? So they would have to say a man doing something at a post, a wooden post. So uh, I would say what are the other elements in the picture? Uh, after shutting the book, uh. and they had to say it from memory. 
and all types of things. Um, so we would see that there is something called uh, composition in a picture. So at that level, age group 11, 12, I taught them foreground, background, main, main team, main picture, just that much, not more than that. And they liked colors, children like colors, combining colors and music. This is what we did with the children. I just wanted to go back for a moment and uh, in general, what kind of music did you play? Was it Indian? Was it Western? No, it was a set of music that had been chosen by Rolf uh, that we had. And uh, earlier I could chant one or two of them. Now I can't, I've forgotten everything. Um, one of them was the very popular, it was called Green Leaves. I don't remember the tune, but um, it was a short piece repeated thrice. So you would hear it thrice. It was for training uh, students to listen to music so that you don't just dance automatically without thinking of this. Mm. I had done uh, one year a um, piece with uh, a dance composition with mother's music mm. because um, I had told the mother about a theme I had in mind of the inner being awakening the different parts of the being, uh, physical, vital and mental. So mother thought I could do it um, with uh, some, uh, some uh, Western classical music. But then afterwards she said, pourquoi pas avec ma musique? Why not with my music? So she asked me to choose five or seven minutes from the beginning or the end of a piece she had called Aspiration in the Physical. So that is how we did one dance. It had come out in the bulletin also uh, of five girls, um, four or five girls and me, six altogether. I think, or for whatever it is. So that's how I started listening to mother's music and saw the phrasing there. And uh, Wilfie, you know, had asked the mother, what is the significance of a rhythmic piece, very similar, which recurs after a few Phrases. So mother had explained that in music it, it is a mood, it is a theme that she is developing and when it has come to one conclusion that peace comes and the, then she starts the next part. You know like um, uh, Andante Allegro, as you have in Western. So, like that, she, I had noticed she often had three parts mm -hmm. in her piece. Did you use Sunilda's music also? I have done with Sunilda's music for others, I haven't done myself. Um, the year. Uh, Quite a few I have done with Shireda's music. Um, actually, he composed uh, pieces which are known as The Hour of God. The Hour of God was a whole theme which is, uh, from which he has selected a certain part to make a half an hour piece. Otherwise, it was with Mother's reading of the text Hour of God. Mm. And in the second part, Mother had also read the Gloire to us and the two years of stuff. 
in French. So that was included in that dance drama. So these we had in Mother's Voice. We had recorded the piece earlier between Norman Dowsett and me, and I think one more person was there at the bottom. The same piece, Hour of God. But then we had the idea we could ask Mother. So Mother, for the first December program, Mother read it. You say sometime back you used to send the cards to the mother, and the mother said leave some space. Yes. Right? So do you have such cards? A research card? No, I don't think I have any research card with me left. No, any comments that mother wrote on your paintings? Do you have anything? No. Um, um, comment on the painting. Um, I had done one one card for Pavitrada's birthday. I thought I had kept it here. There were two sun, two three sunflowers. Not this one. Not this one. I thought I had kept it somewhere. No, three. No, it's not that. Mm -hmm. I was standing downstairs and um, in the ashram in front of uh, what we call Puja Lal's room, that window opposite the Samadhi. And um, Mother came right up to Pavitrada's door along the corridor and she asked him, how many flowers do you think she had in her hand when she did this composition of three? Mm. So Pavitrada looked very carefully at the card and said, two. So Mother said, no, only one. Ah. So mm, then I came to know, I used to have my desk here. I was holding the the sunflower in the hand and then I turned it and did it from another angle and my mother had shown them uh, how I had done it. I thought I had kept a uh, copy of it. the sunflower at the bottom? No, there are many. No, that is uh, another. Yeah. That is another. I will find out afterwards. Mm -hmm. Here in this album. For memory, uh, general comments she made on your paintings. General comments. Of oh, I was saying her. that one. Uh, mother, uh, mother said uh, at that time when I did that card and gave it to Pavitrada, I sent it to Pavitrada. My classmates, all of them signed, oh. you know, a, a, a monfet for him. And they said to, to me, uh, we will call you when we are ready, they are ready, upstairs. So I was standing downstairs and they never called me. I went on waiting and then I suddenly saw Mother cross the corridor and she asked Parichrita, how many flowers do you think she had in her hand? He said two. Mother said no, only one. And then she said, sit an artist. She is an artist. Ella garde in copy. I have kept a copy. Before, when I did the card, I had kept a copy for myself. So mother said, set an artist. <laughs> and she didn't want to lose the composition. So that's about all I have from her. Um, one year, as I told you, I had offered six paintings. One was that uh, Morning Glory, and the other was that why a lotus, I called it Lotus of the Head, because I had seen it on her. You saw it on Mother's Head, mm. yes. Uh, how I saw it, it was a very strange incident. Uh, Mother used to see me in the corridor near the eastern window, last window on this side. And for some reason, she was leaning on her elbow, thinking, what she was going to say to somebody else, I think. 
And I was standing about a meter and a half away, and he just stared at so. And mother had commented much later, El pain ce qu'elle voit. She, <laughs> she pays what she sees. She sees. Mm. But after she chose that one as the right type, I stopped much of my former painting, flowers and uh, uh, trees and all. I mainly did ideals or things that came. Did you put questions to mother regarding paintings or that or guidance in <laughs> writing you have questions and answers? No, I don't think so. Or you were any personal conversations with the mother? Like, oh, like class that? problems, students' problems, you know. Ha, that, uh, mm, there are two that come to me straight away. One was when I was asked to take up French literature mm. in the higher course. So I was, it was my subject as a student. And I did the my French, we had at that time um, Sakpri taking one of the classes, one paper mm -hmm. on modern French literature and we did Jules Romain with him and Malraux, a few moderns. We had a language class with Nero Dada who used to give us a dictation every week. And every week he would read, um, you know, baccalaureate level also has dictation in the Lycée. So he would read out two possibilities to the mother, and the mother would choose which dictation he would choose for that week. So once a week we did that. And another once a week we did history of French literature with Kunuma. You know, Kurumaji. Oh. <laughs> he spoke very fluid French. He, he took uh, history of French literature. So, when I, uh, I asked Mother, uh, Mother, you have said um, literature is all words, words, words. It's all throat center, Mother used to say sometimes. Actually, what is written in, with inspiration? Um, I, uh, should I take up literature in the school, French literature there? Yeah. So mother said, when a child is 12, 14 year old and chooses to do literature, certainly you will do it. And then no nonsense about it. You have to do a thorough job. <laughs> and then I told mother I would like to approach French literature like Sri has done in Future Poetry in those four chapters, Course of English Poetry. So I would like to approach like that. So first mother said, you know, he was not very enthusiastic about French literature. So in French, uh, so I said, but he has referred to French literature in his, uh, so mother said, show me. So I picked out all the references to French literature in the future poetry. And uh, Sujata, no, Sujata di, did a big chart. You know, I did it in columns this uh, century and that century and that century and this is what. So, but I had missed out one or two references. So mother went through and when she returned the uh, paper, she said, it's all right, you can start your work with the student. Mentioned it but two. It's not all, you, there, is, there is a little more <laughs> to it. But you can start that way. Yeah. So that is about French literature that I started. And um, Sherbindo himself has referred to, to French literature when uh, he speaks of medieval 
literature in English Chaucer and it is modern like a, all he has said all modern languages also in their at the beginning is has an epic form storytelling so like Chaucer's it is pilgrims going to Canterbury and they uh, they are waiting on the in their journey and they are telling each other stories. That's how the Canterbury Tales are made. So in French also, you had um, three types because it followed the French social setup of that time. You had the zamindars, the uh, castle owners, you know, Chatelain. You had uh, the priests, so, and you had the common people. So there are three types, usually, of these, and Charlemagne was a very important figure mm. in Europe who tried to unite Europe through Christianity. And so um, there were many stories of Charlemagne that are told afterwards in modern language also by Victor Hugo. So that was my subject. My mother liked the way I approached it. To come back to paintings, uh -huh. uh, uh, what kind of paintings do you, you like to paint? I mean, whether you like uh, nature or landscapes or what medium you used for your paintings? I told you gradually my, my urge became expressing an emotion or an idea. If I was struck by something, instead of painting the thing, I would paint what I felt. So it became more abstract. This particular one, I'll take it out, it is easy to take no, out. Can't turn. It is all right. This uh, particular one is um, when is love and death. This one was something I was thinking of because I told my students that you know, they were art appreciation students. So I said, you must have noticed that in a color film, the uh, the director doesn't give any color dress, sari or anything to to the actor or actress. The color chosen suits the mood or the temperament of the character. In the same way, you choose some feeling that you have had and just rub that color, which color you see. And they came out with very interesting things. Um, and they did uh, thought and um, love and other emotions like that, you know. And they chose very nice colors. So when I gave them that, um, that subject, I was walking back. And I said, it's very good to give a subject to a set of students. What will I do if I had to give to a character a color and all that? I won't believe it. I was doing that here in the poem Love and Death presentation on the stage, um, like a recitation and dialogue both. You won't believe it. I was in that corner um, just past uh, Kurma's house. And it was as if in a screen, I saw, white screen, I saw exactly this. And um, for, for love and death, the, the orangish red for love and black for death. And uh, I made a little mistake, which I could never correct, the spiral here should go behind the flame. Uh -huh. <laughs>
but I could correct it. I added there a little red and green for Huru and Priyambara, as if they were praying. And it was quite a big drawing. Mm. So this was a really a very really strange experience. After that time, time, which year? Uh, 1976. Hmm. So uh, how many paint you, you continue to paint even now? Now, almost none. I do some sketches because I have time, I have nothing to do. How many works you have produced over the years? Oh, quite a few as you see, according to whatever. I've done quite a few flowers. I have done, when I had gone to Nainita, I then direct sketching on paper. I used to move around with a sketch pad and to draw on it. I should have kept it handy here. They were interesting. Oh, one day we'll... Uh we what do all painting, you can. I wanted to ask you about this one. This one, the window. <laughs> it is that last window. Half open window. Beautiful. Uh, Amitadi, you have assimilated so much from the mother regarding paintings, so, you know, guidance from the mother, about paintings, sketches. So you give guidance how to treat the children. So, in totality, what have assimilated from the mother regarding painting, drawings, and what message you put forth to the present artists? Okay. I'll, I'll have to prepare a little bit for that. Good. Good. Present day, it is such an empty world, it is very difficult to say anything. But um, I think. Um, if people are interested in drawing and painting, they can still have scenery. And if they look at many painters' pictures, you know, you have to look at uh, the variety of expression of different artists, you know, and uh, see how somebody has have put more stress on the background. Somebody has put, you know, how different artists have dealt with their work, their theme. You have to look at many pictures. That's what I used to always say. And we looked at always some pictures. And in my art appreciation class, which some of the students had asked for, we had a normal method of working. I would bring a reproduction and it would be on the mat. We used to sit on the mat and each student would comment on it, mm. what he or she felt, whether, you know, they liked it on the whole. So the usual way of art appreciation, I said it's not enough to say, I like this picture, I don't like that picture. You have to find out. That's how we started about composition and being team. I'll tell about it another time. Yes, I think I'd like to know much more about your art appreciation classes. So perhaps we can take uh, it up. Take it up in our next meeting. Yes, yeah, sure. Wonderful. Sure. Thank you so much. <laughs> art appreciation classes were actually thrown on my shoulders. <laughs> The, the student who came and said, um, I'm sure you can find some time. So I said, no, I, I, I know nothing about it. I like pictures, yeah. but I have never held art appreciation classes. Um, all right, I shall try. We shall discuss. And you get the historical part ready. When was the artist and what was the age? Mm -hmm. So on that uh, condition, we started the wow. art appreciation classes. Wonderful.